In today's lesson, what we'll be doing is actually finally adding an image to our splash scene load, uh, code so that we can actually get a picture showing up as our splash scene. So last time we were here, we created our splash scene and title scene. We added that in so that we have a template before we start changing splash scene. So today we're gonna to change that code, but before we can begin that, if we're gonna add an image, we need to actually have the image. So what we need to do is go and get the assets and load them in. So you can either go to the link in the video or to the website. And at the bottom of the website, there is this directory that you can open up and it will open up here. We've already got the Fivi icons and we downloaded those. Today you'll have to download the assets folder. So if you just select the folder and alternate click and go download, it will start preparing it and downloading it. Now this will take quite some time because it has to zip up all those files and folders. So I've actually already got this on my desktop or in my downloads folder. Oh, it didn't take a long time. There, it popped up right away. I already have mine downloaded and I called it assets. Because I'm on a Mac, I can just double click to unzip it. Um, depending on what kind of computer you're on, you're gonna have to figure out how to unzip it. But now I have this folder. I can just go back to my Repolit and just take this entire folder and just drop it on. And it will hopefully create my assets folder. There it is. And it will, if you just give it some time, there we go, it will load all of the images in there for you. And it's not just images, we have sound files and in there as well. So now that we actually have the assets and we're ready to go, now we can start moving forward. So we're not going to change the index.html today. We're not even going to change the game.js file. All we're going to focus on is the splash scene. Um, actually, that's not true. I'm going to go back to the game.js file, and you'll remember that we set the background to a particular color. Since my image is going to have a white background, I'm going to set the initial color to white just so that it always matches up and the user doesn't seem some, see some kind of flicker happen. So that is in game.js. So in splash scene, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the image that we're going to be using. So before you can actually use it in code, you have to load it in to phaser three so that it can actually see it. So if we go back to assets here, the image that we're going to be using is called splash scene image, oddly enough. So it's this one right here. I'm just gonna open this up in a new tab so you can see what it looks like. And there's our image. It's the Mother Teresa Game Studio logo that we're going to be using. So this is the file name and directory path that we're gonna to have to remember that we're going to have to be using. So to make this happen, inside our game scene under preload, currently we are just spitting out to the console that we're in the game or in splash scene so we know where we are, but we're going to add in here the code that we need to load in the file so that we can actually access it. Okay, so what that code looks like is like this. So this, you will notice, is a reserved word, just like we used for this dot camera, and that refers to the current scene we are in. So if we scroll up to the top, it's the splash scene, which extends phaser scene. Okay, so the splash scene that we are currently in we are going to load an image, and the image that we're going to load is in this folder right here in the directory. You can just leave it blank, or you can do the dot slash, which is a nice Linux way of using it, saying in the current directory, then go to the assets folder 
and then pick up this image. And like we've done before, we're going to give it a key, and this is the value. So the key for this that we're going to be referencing from now on in phaser is going to be called splash scene background. So once we have that, then phaser can have access to it. Once it has access to it, we need to take that image and assign it to a variable so that we can actually do something with it. And we do that in the create section here. So in the create section, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take this keyword that we're talking about and we're to this once again, or the scene, we're going to add a sprite. So the sprite is just a two dimensional image. We're going to take the image and we're going to place it in the X, Y coordinate that is zero, zero. And that's the top upper left of our game. So for us, it's over here in the top corner. That's where we're going to place our image. And we're going to place it in a variable called splash screen background image. And that's going to be, that variable is going to be accessible on this scene. Once we have the image loaded, another thing we'd like to do is actually center it. So it shows up in the very center of our screen. So we're going to say, in our scene, we're going to take our splash screen background image and we're going to take its X coordinate and we're going to assign it to the middle in the X direction. And if you remember from before, we are using a 1080p size for our game. So the width of our screen is 1920 pixels. And then we do the exact same thing for the Y dimension. We're going to take this variable, its Y position, and we're going to assign it the middle, oops, you don't mind quotes, the middle of our C. Okay, so we load the image and then we put it in the very middle of our C. So if we just run this now, I'm gonna move this up slightly so you hopefully you can see it here. And if we run this now, it, you might have seen it, it flicked there for a split second. So the image showed up, our splash scene loaded, the image actually did load, but then it went instantaneously to our title scene. So it just flickered there for a second and vanished. So the reason for that is in update, we have it so that as soon as update happens, and remember on a good game, update is happening 60 times a second. So after it loaded the image, one sixtieth of a second later, it ran this code and it said, oh, now go to title scene. So we might not want it to flicker instantaneous like that. We might want it to wait a little while. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in an if statement and we're going to use this built-in variable called time. So time is being added up in milliseconds continuously as our game is going on. And we can use that variable and access it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go back to where we have this console log that we're printing to the screen. And I'm going to show you how this actually works. So we're going to use console.log and we're going to print out time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment out switching over to the new scene for a moment here so that it doesn't switch. It's going to stay on the first scene and this update's going to keep happening over and over again. And hopefully over here on the side of our terminal, we'll see time increasing. So we're going to run this again. There we go. And you can see that time is moving on. So it calculates it in number of milliseconds or thousands of seconds since the beginning of the game. And we could use this to help us with our game. So we're just going to delete this because clearly we don't want 
the time just to move on and on. And you'll notice for our um, image for our splash screen is staying where it is now because we didn't move to the new scene. So instead of just moving to the new scene instantaneously, like we would normally do, what we want is to use that time variable and actually wait a little bit. And what we want to do is we want to wait for three seconds. So we're going to use an if statement. We're going to say if time is greater than 3,000 milliseconds, then we're going to switch to the new scene. So this we're going to move inside our if statement. Make sure we invent it properly. So once the clock passes three seconds or 3,000 milliseconds, then we will finally switch over. So it will, image will now stay up for a little while, and then it will flip over to our title scene, which is just a blank at the moment. So it did take a little while to load there. And in Repl.it, it doesn't load as nicely. Um, once we save this up to GitHub, it'll load much nicer in GitHub. So it seems should load here. So I think what's happening is Replit's taking even longer than three seconds. And there it is. You saw it just for a split second and then it vanishes. So we know that Replit, um, its web thing isn't always perfect. Um, you could increase this number a little bit to five, um, but once we save it back to GitHub in the GitHub version, it'll work much better. So don't forget, when you're finished, you always go back to GitHub and, or to the version control and push your code back to GitHub. So today we added in splash image and save that back. And then you can go to your GitHub link and once it updates, it should work much better in there.